Welcome to the Idiot's Guide. I'm Mackie Hall, and today we're going to be building a basic badge logo using Adobe Illustrator 2020. Badge logos are great because they contain a pile of information about a brand or a product. Lots of examples out there, but if you really want to focus, let's look at some pro sports teams right here. The logo I'm building today has been circulating around the web for quite some time now. I don't know who made it, but uh, if I find out, I'll include it in the description below. I love the logo personally because it incorporates so many basic Illustrator features that if you can build this, you're on a good point to jump off and build a lot of other things. So with that in mind, let's get started, shall we? The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Width is going to be 1,000 points and the height is going to be 1,000 points as well. Once that's done, let's select our polygon tool. Click anywhere on the page. Our polygon is going to have a 150 point radius with six sides. Once we've created our polygon, let's center it horizontally and let's center it vertically on the page as well. If you don't see this, uh, you can always go to Windows and open up the Align window right here or Shift F7. Once we've got that, I'm going to select my Rotate tool we're going to rotate my polygon 90 degrees. From here, let's start playing with color. Let's make our fill transparent. And, and let's select our stroke and make our stroke sort of a deep red. Maybe something like that. Once we've done that, let's increase our stroke to 12 points. And let's select our direct select tool. From here, we are going to bevel our anchor points. The way we do that is these are our bevel points right here. We're just going to drag them in slightly and release. Now we've got our bevels. Next step, let's grab our rectangle tool. And let's start on the left side and we're going to draw a rectangle across from our left to our right to house our main text. That should be about right right there. Let's switch our stroke and our fill. So our fill is now the deep red and our stroke is transparent. Let's zoom in just a little bit, shall we? Next step, let's look at our original document and notice the mountains that we want to create here. Let's do the same thing. We'll get started with our mountains straight away. This is a good instance of learning how to use our pen tool. We're going to select our pen tool. We're going to start at our left side. We're going to click on our left path without it being selected. Then we're going to hold our shift key. Our shift key orients our path in 45 degree increments. So it's, so it's a great way to get an exact angle. Go about there. Go down about there. To about there. Maybe there, there, and there. While we're working on this, let's switch our stroke to black and our fill to transparent. And let's work our way around the file. The reason I've got a black stroke and a transparent fill is so I can see how I'm drawing my path. It's really important. If I've got a white fill, I won't be able to see exactly how I'm drawing my path. Instead, what I'm doing is I've got a contrasting stroke and a transparent fill so I can see exactly what I'm doing. Next step is I'm going to swap out my stroke and my fill. So my fill is black and my stroke is transparent. I'll double click on my fill and let's give our mountain sort of a deep blue color. I think that's pretty good right there. We'll click off and let's then select our mountain and let's bring it to back. We're going to select object, arrange, send to back. Let's give our shape a little bit of form. The way we're going to do this is we're going to select our pen tool once again. We're going to draw a mountain cap using our shift key to give us those 45 degree increments. Let's get started. From the bottom of our mountain, 
maybe about here. We'll click, holding our shift key down, we'll go to the summit. Click there. Let's zoom in just a little bit so we can get a better hold of what we are doing. Click here. Click here. Click here. Click here. And then let's close that shape up. Let's swap our fill to white and our stroke to transparent, just like that. It's a good start. We're going to do the same thing with our next two summits. Next, I'm going to arrow my summits to match. And it works for now. Let's do our next summit. Now that our mountains are done, if we scroll down just a little bit, we can see our whole piece. Let's select our pen tool and anywhere in our rectangle box, let's click and we are going to write mountain sky. We'll select all of our text and we'll select Bebis as our typeface. We'll center our type and we will size up to approximately take up that entire space. We'll continue to size up. And we will arrow over. Next what we'll do is we will Track our text out to about 20 to 30 points, depending what we've got here. You can kind of fish it out. About 30 points will do. Let's change our text to white. Next, let's write our subtext. Again, we'll select our text tool. Bebis is already selected, so we'll click here. We will write Bozeman, Montana. Then on the next line, we'll write 2020. We'll size our type down to 20 points and set our leading to 24. Next, we'll grab our select tool and we will just move our type to fit the space best. Next, let's change our fill to white and our stroke to transparent. We've got a couple more steps and we're done. We're going to work on our sky now. We're going to select our rectangle tool. We'll drag from the left side over to the right side. About there is pretty good. We'll then select our initial sky color. Start about there. Then I'll copy and paste in front. And holding our shift key, we'll arrow up. Shift key moves elements in 10 point increments. Very helpful in something like this. Next, we'll change our fill color to make it a light blue. That's pretty close right there. Next up, we'll select our blend tool and we're going to click on the bottom right of our first rectangle, and then we're going to click on the bottom right of our initial rectangle. Next step, we'll double click on our blend tool, and we'll change the spacing to specified steps. We'll select preview, and we'll change those steps to three. That works. Now that we've completed our sky, we want to place it inside our hexagon, and we also want to drop it back behind the mountains. Here's how we do it. We'll select our hexagon, we'll copy and paste it in front, we'll select our hexagon, and then holding our shift key, we'll select our sky. Next thing we'll do, we'll select object, clipping mask, and make. Once that's done, now that it's selected, we will send it to back. Object, Arrange, 
send to back. We're getting close now. Let's add the sun in. We'll click and hold a rectangle tool, and we'll drag down to our star tool. Once there, we can click anywhere on our screen. I'll just do it right in front of our badge. And we'll make sure our first radius is at 20 points. Our second radius is at 200. And we'll have a 12 point star. Click OK. And we'll give our star a white fill and a black stroke. This will help us position the piece. We'll grab our select tool. We'll click and drag our sun to about there. Now that we've got it positioned, we'll delete our black stroke. And then we will create a mask. The way we'll do that is we'll select our path, copy and paste it in front, and then bring it to the front. We'll hold our shift key down, select our sun, and we'll go object, clipping mask, make. We'll do something different now. We will bring our sun to the back in increments. So we won't send it to back, but we'll send it backwards. We can do this two ways. With our sun selected, we'll select object, arrange, send backwards, or we can hit control left bracket and that will send the sun back incrementally. Notice that I'm continually hitting it. And there we go right there. If we zoom out, Last step, we'll drag across our artwork and group everything together. We're all done. So there you go. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, throw me a like, I'd really appreciate it, or better yet, subscribe. I'll see you all soon. See you.